All right, so how did that go? I hope you gave it a go and you now have a working category view controller that works as you expect it to. Now, I know I'm repeating myself, but if you haven't given it a go, do it now. Don't watch the solution video first because then you can't prove to yourself that you really do understand it. So I'm gonna presume that you've given it a real good go and you're just here to check and make sure that you've got it right. So if we have a look at our to-do list view controller, the first thing we have is this variable item array that contains an array of NS managed objects created using the item entity. Now over here, we'll need something similar. So let's create a variable called categories that is going to be an array of category objects and we'll initialize it as an empty array. The next thing we need to do is we need to grab a reference to the context that we're going to be using in order to create, read, update, and destroy our data. And this is gonna be the thing that's going to communicate with our persistent container. So the context is going to be equal to our UI application and we're going to grab the shared singleton app instance and we're going to tap into its delegate property and we're going to downcast this as a app delegate object. And then we're going to tap into our app delegates persistent container variable and then we're going to load up the view context for that persistent container. If any of that was confusing at all, make sure that you have a look back at when we first wrote this line of code and also the animations where we walked through how this worked. Now, the next thing is to set up our table view data source methods. So we should know the required ones by now, right? It's table view number of rows in section, and we're going to return, of course, the number of items in our categories array. So return categories dot count. All right, so on to the next obligatory table view delegate method, which is table view self a row at index path, which is here, self a row at index path. So here we are going to, so here we are going to DQ a reusable cell with identifier for index path. So this creates a reusable cell and adds it to the table at the index path. So the identifier is a string and let's just go back and check what we called it and we called it category cell. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it into here as the identifier. And the index path is of course the current index path that the table view is trying to load up. Now, once we've created our reusable cell, now once we've created our reusable cell, we gotta set the cells text label dot text property. And we're gonna set it to equal categories at index path dot row. And we're going to tap into the categories name property or name attribute that we created earlier on. That property gets automatically generated because we added it as an attribute. And finally, all that's left to do is to simply return the cell and it will be rendered on screen. Now, the next thing I'm going to work on is the add button pressed IV action. And here we're going to create a new alert, which is going to be created from a UI alert controller. And I'm gonna use the initializer that takes a title, which we'll call add new category. Message will leave blank and the preferred style will just be alert. And then I'm gonna create a action equals UI alert action. And this also takes a title, which is going to be the word, just add, that's gonna be the name of the button. The style is just gonna be default action. And I'm gonna select the placeholder for the handler and hit enter so that it creates this completion handler for us. I'm gonna name the alert action just action. We're not really going to use it. And I'm going to delete the code placeholder. Now inside this completion block or closure is where we're going to specify what should happen once the user clicks that add button. But before we do that, we're going to say alert dot add action. And the action we want to add is the one that we created just now. And we're also going to set up our text field. So we do that using alert dot add text field. And we're going to hit enter on the configuration handler and we're going to call our text field just field. And once that new text field has been created and added to the alert, 
we're going to store a reference to it by creating a variable called text field, which is going to be a new UI text field object. And then we're going to set that text field to be equal to the field that is created inside our alert. And then we're going to set the text fields placeholder to maybe something like add a new category. And finally, we're going to say present view controller to present is the alert view controller animated true completion nil. Okay, so now it's time to address what should happen when the user clicks on the add button inside the alert. Well, this is where we have to create a new NS managed object, and that is going to be a new category. So let new category equal category. Now notice how there's also a type alias called opaque pointer that also has the name category. So make sure you don't pick the opaque pointer, pick our category instead, and also double check the data type by option clicking on category afterwards. And we have to create our category by specifying a context. We've already created a reference to our context at the top of our file. So that's the one we're going to use. And by the way, if when you option click on your category and Xcode tells you it's a opaque pointer data type, just surround the word category with backticks like this, and that should solve the problem. But because we're inside a closure, remember, we have to write self dot context in order to refer to that variable. Now we're going to set up the new category. New category dot name is going to equal to the text field dot text. So whatever the user entered into that text field inside the alert is going to be the name of the new category. And then we're going to grab a reference to our array of category objects by saying self dot categories dot append. And we're going to add this new category to the array. And finally, we're going to call save categories. And this method, of course, doesn't exist, which is why it's not being highlighted. So this is a good time to go into our data manipulation methods section over in the middle here and add that function, save categories. And now Xcode reminds us that of course we need the self in front of save categories because we're inside a closure and then it changes color to reflect the fact that it recognizes what we're talking about and which method we want to use. So inside our save categories method, I'm going to try and commit our context to our persistent container by saying context dot save. Now, because this throws, then I'm going to hold it inside a do catch block and I'm going to log or print any errors that it catches. So error saving category and the error is error. All right. And finally, once we have saved successfully, we're going to call table view dot reload data so that our table view updates with our latest data. Now, the last thing that we have to do is we need to call a method called load categories when we first initialize our category view controller. And that also does not exist. So we need to add that over here. We're gonna create a function called load categories and inside here, we need to read data from our context. And to read data from our context, we need to specify a request. And we need to specify the data type of the request as a NS fetch request that is going to return an array of category items. And this is going to be equal to a broad request. So we want to grab all of the category objects. So we're going to say category dot fetch request. So we get back all the NS manage objects that were created using the category entity. So now we're going to say try context dot fetch, and we're going to fetch back all the results that fit our current request. And if our fetching of our request succeeds, then we're going to save 
the output or whatever gets returned from this method into our categories array. So we can say categories equals try context fetch request. And because this method can throw, then it's a good idea to trap it inside a do catch block where we're going to print and say there was an error loading categories and this was the error code and error message. So now all we have left to do is we have to tell the table view to reload the data using our latest version of categories after fetching all of the category object. So let's give our app a go and see if all of that code worked. Cool, so we're bringing up a blank table view because currently we still don't have any categories. And you can confirm that if you go into the SQLite database. But if we add some new categories, let's say, I don't know, shopping list, maybe another one called home and one called work and maybe one called miscellaneous. Okay, so we now have four categories and we can check to make sure that they are indeed being persisted using core data by double tapping the home screen, terminating our app and going back into our app. And as you can see, they are still exactly where we left them. So our code has succeeded. So if you had any problems setting up your code up to this point, then it might be worth going back to your code and seeing if there's any errors or bugs that you can fix. Now in the next lesson, we're gonna set up our table view delegate methods, namely what should happen when we click on one of the category cells. Because when I click on home, I want it to take me to a table view that contains all of the to-do list items that are associated with the home category. So for all of that and more, I'll see you on the next lesson.